manufaa ninasema tusimame naona bado kuna watu wameketi bando eh nigetaka tusimame ili tukaweza kufungua na neno la maombi na tafadhali wakati huu sasa sio wa stories tusipoke stories saa hii jameni i can see people are still <laughs> talking to each other nigetaka sasa tuwe kitu kimoja katika jina la Yesu bwana asifiwe amen praise the name of the lord amen. kama unanisikia nipungie mkono tafadhali Yee, yeah, I can see we are set. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, in the name of your dear Son Jesus Christ, we want to thank you and we want to honor you. We want to glorify your holy name this afternoon in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the grace that you bestowed upon each and every one of us that we are again in this crowd that my father we may praise you and we may honor you we may glorify your holy name we may continue lifting up your name in the name of jesus christ and my father we exhort you we glorify your holy name king of kings we pray dear father even as we take this afternoon session almighty god may you read us may you guide us may you lead us and control us oh dear father in everything that god we go to do we pray that jehovah god the guidance and the leadership of the holy spirit will take over in the name of jesus this is prayer of faith oh god that you shall read us today that you shall guide us this hour as you be together with us in the morning even this time my father we pray that grace continue to increase in and multiply in our lives in the mighty name of jesus because my father jehovah you have called us to serve you no matter who the sins or no lord my lord we declare that we shall serve you jehovah god in and out of season in the name of jesus this is prayer of faith oh god that we have gathered to erect your name lord we have gathered to worship you we have gathered to honor you in the name of jesus as we know that in heaven my lord angels do worship you angels do honor you this is our prayer of faith my father even as we have gathered here today we connect with the angels we connect jehovah god with the 24 elders who worship you day and night and declare that holy holy you are the lord the lord who was the lord who is and the lord who is to come the almighty god and this is why my father we praise you this is why lord we magnify your name father we pray that your grace and your glory shall be manifested upon this place in the mighty name of jesus glory honor you and he worship you in jesus mighty name and everybody say amen give the lord a mighty hand clap i'm saying give the lord a mighty hand clap amen amen wanna see if you karatina Bwana asifiwe. Ah watu wa karatina kwani energy energy imeenda wapi? Kuna watu wamegongwa na ice. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Tutafuta mali hakuna maji. Tucheze kidogo tumwimbie Bwana. Bwana asifiwe. Ask your neighbor, ask your neighbor with ask accent. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Are you put your accent I beg. Are you ready to praise Jesus? Are you ready? Ah, shangwe na bigelegele. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go back. Let's go back. Shangilia bwana. Hallelujah. Kote ari kumsifu bwana. Kote ari kumsifu bwana. Na ngoje hawa jitayarishe kidogo tu. tu tunatulia tu tunatulia hapa kwa tunatulia tu usikuwe na pressure ambia neighbor usikuwe na pressure Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah.
those who are in that mood of worship and calling upon God and want us to uh, receive the man of God to come and meet us in the session of intercessory in the next 20 minutes that we may call upon God there are so many things that we can tell our God there are so many issues that we want God to intervene we can see even the condition of the crowd right now but we want to believe that God is capable to change all things so I want us to appreciate the man of God Bishop open as he comes to the podium and to go to the intercessory the name of Jesus. We need to pray that God will continue giving us more grace because we declare that we are unstoppable. We have to move and we have to continue with this conference no matter the condition of the crowd because we believe that there is a solution for every problem in the name of Jesus. Bwana Yesu asifiwe abia jilani yako we are unstoppable we are unstoppable in the name of Jesus. So, Bishop Obed, can you lead us in that verse intercessory for 20 minutes so that we may continue? Amen. Thank you. We said, God, the Reverend George Wender, and we thank God for this man, the Lord has brought us. The Bible says that you have been given power and authority over every works of the enemy. And the Bible also tells us, whatever two or three shall agree upon, here on this earth, it shall be done in heaven. I thank God for the praise team. You have given us some great worship, especially the song that you have just had with. Can we go back to that song? We lift up our holy hands before God. Those who are few Speak a new tongue. Speak to God. Tell Him something about the remaining few hours. Because God knows everything. He had that such where we are. And He knows what is happening. And where we are going. In Jesus name. I thank God for the workers. Lift up your holy hands before God. Inua mikone yako bereza buwana. Ukonyuma inua mikone yako bereza buwana. Waibaji tuongozeni kwa nyibo. To Kenderea Kumabia Buana, Nia Sante Jehovah, Nakushukuru to Nakuinua. You are worthy to be exalted, Almighty God. You are worthy to be glorified, Almighty God. Riba Bozikere, Riba Bozaya, Rima Shanta, Riba Bozanda, Rekabo Bozikete, Riba Mientere Rebo Boza, Ricabo Shanda Rebabo, Mazere Rebabo Zaya, Ricabo Santoro Bozaya, Remeshen de Ribabo, Visere Cayanto Robo, Mazera Bori Cayanta, Rebabo Shanda Rebabore, Mientere Rebabo Zaya, Rebabo Zocoto, Ribabo Shentere Rebo. Mazere Baburianto, Reba Bushantara Raba, Mizara Raba Babuzaya, Reka Boyanto Ribo, in the name of Jesus Christ, Satan, we declare that you are liar, we declare Satan, that you are the mental, we declare Satan, that we are the winning side, we declare Satan, that you are the winning side, our Jesus has overcome for us today. Our Jesus has overcome for us today. And today, we declare that Jesus, you are seated on the right hand of God. You are hearing our cry. You are interceding for us. You are interceding for this meeting. Heavenly Father, we give you glory. Heavenly Father, we worship you. Heavenly Father, we adore you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bizarre Babo Zah. Rekabo Zokoto. Rekabo Yanteri Babo. Mashantari Ribo. Satan we pull you down. We pull down every struggle. We pull down every power. We pull down every struggle. In the 
name of Jesus Christ, we pull down every power, we pull down every stronghold in the name of Jesus Christ, and we declare power in the name of Jesus. We declare power in the blood of Jesus Christ. We declare power in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus, you have given us authority. Jesus, you have given us power over the powers of the enemy. And the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue can invest in Jesus' mighty name. All of us, we are praying. We are lifting up our voices. We are doing spiritual warfare. We are bringing down every knowledge and every power of the enemy. Right now, in Jesus' name, let's open our voices. Let's move around right now. In Jesus' mighty name, Satan, we pull down your powers and your operation. We pull down right now every voice of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every one of us, you have seen what we have seen today. And God has given us power and authority. Can we go unto the courts of heaven? Mahali Mugwa Nakana 24 elders and we tell God lift up the issue of this town and this meeting in Jesus name if with our God all things are possible God is the owner of this meeting God is the owner of all of us even the skies even the weather they belong to God let's thank God for everything as you tell God Give us a favorable weather this evening in Jesus' name. I'm waiting to hear the voices of the singers now. Why badge in a scare south yet? Why badge in south yet? We see King and Jews. Why badge in south yet? Why badge in South Yen? Why badge in King and Clap on a microphone?
and with the God all things are possible. This is my prayer that this evening we are going to see God with our eyes. Let's tell God to bring the sunshine. Weather favorable to do the ministry for the rest of the hours. Because what we agree upon, it will be done in Jesus' mighty name. Let's go in the course of heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ.
ro shine ro amode muraika ke mutia ohoge nerialu tiri rohoge ake muradi make mwaro arejo we are going to shake in jesus mighty name can I hear your voice again? Let's do our warfare before God. Let's ask God for the supernatural law. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your voices and sing us now. Let me hear your voices. Let me hear your voices now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us lift up our voices.
we humbly approach you at the role of mercy. We are glad with our ears about you, God. And this is my prayer. Can you visit us, Lord, that we may see you and experience you? Father, I pray that this is not any other meeting. This is your divine appointment, O oh God. You have spoken to us about the way you are angel made God with your servant. And you shake this name. Change the name of the city. Let me known as a city of the living God. Father, as we go to hear your word this afternoon, even as we worship you, as we gather here, Lord, we release our servant to you. We decrease God as we increase in our midst, dear Father. Every barrier that is will you hinder your presence, we repent of it in Jesus' name. And God, we take power and authority over every works of darkness. Satan, I rebuke you. My God rebukes you. Remove your grief from this area and go back where you came from in Jesus' name. Angels of the living God, move over this tent right now. Release a fresh anointing to the speaker and to the minister and everyone who is serving today. In Jesus' name we pray. receded stindre from the earth at the end of the hundred and fifty days the water had gone down and on the seventeenth day of the seventh month of uh, the seventh month the ark came to rest on the mountains of Arafat verse 5 the water seemed until the tenth month and on the first day of the tenth month of the tops of the mountains became visible. So we want to believe that what water has covered already, God is capable of making this water to recede, to go down, and also the, the, the crowd become favorable for us. And I believe this is the prayer or of faith that we have prayed together Trusting that God, this conference will continue no matter what in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. God is capable of making uh, rain to rain at night and during the day to have a favorable weather whereby this conference will continue. If we believe together, can you raise your hand and say, I believe so. I believe so. In Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, I request now. as we praise the Lord. asking you again. Are you ready to praise Jesus? Uliza jirani yako ayoka uko iko tayari kumwimbia Bwana kidogo tu. Mwambie kidogo. Hallelujah. Let's go.
uh, Brother Mike so that uh, she may invite for us our guest artist who is with us to continue from there. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we ready to worship the Lord? How many by the show of hand are ready to worship the Almighty God? Hallelujah. We thank God for this moment. It's a moment to be in the presence of God. It's a moment ya kusikiza Mungu na kusikia mapenzi yake ambayo anataka kutuambia sisi na ndio maana ametuleta hapa. Na miongoni mwetu we have a woman of God. Ambia jirani yako we have a woman of God. This is a woman I love because she loves the Lord. And when she opens her mouth to worship God, anamwabudu Mungu mpaka wewe mwenye unatamani nini? Kumwabudu Mungu. Kwa hivyo jioni ya leo we have our sister Edith Wairimu. in her heart and she's not just here in vain haja kuja tu kila jambo ambalo hutendeka mungu huwa amelipanga na nalifanya kutimia kwa hivu hata jioni ya leo kuwa na watumishi wa mungu kama hawa si kwa kawaida tu sio kwa sababu walialiko kwa huu mkutano lakini Mungu aliona ni vyema waje watuhudumie sisi. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa hivyo nitapoleta mtumishi wa Mungu, our sister Edith Wairimu, atakuwa kihudumu na wapendwa hawa wa praise and worship ambao wako hapa na ninajua ya kwamba tutahudumiwa na Mungu mwenyewe kwa maana ni yeye anashughulikia mioyo yetu. So let's put our hands together and invite the woman of God karibu sana come and be used of God may the Lord use you to minister to these people that they will receive that which you have prepared for their lives hatuko hapa kukutana na Edith tuko hapa kukutana na Christo ambaye ndiye mwanzo na mwisho wa maisha yetu jamani tumwalike kwa shangwe na mjelegele thank you Lord for your love salute you angels of God assigned in this place we salute you Lord Jesus we salute you and every glory and honor that would emanate from this altar let it be to you God we humble ourselves that you be glorified in our place Lord you be seen you receive that glory in the name of Jesus Oh, cool. 
place on his own. You commanded it. Na kama umeamrisha Bwana. One thing I know is that vime kamilika. One thing I know is that you are backing this up by your Holy Spirit. And that we are not alone because angels of God surround this place. I thank you because your presence is here. I want to thank you because you are affecting the change that you wanted to do. I give you the glory, my God, because it is you doing it, my Father. It is you, Lord. To you be all the glory. To you be all the praise. I worship your holy name. <laughs>
kuna wenye watapotea hapo katikati kuna wimbo kitambo tulikuwa tunaimba tunafanya hivi moyo wangu utainuka na kumsifu bwana leo eh nimesikia watu wengi wanaijua
biashara si ndio kuna wale watu wamelala si ndio kwa hivyo sisi wenye tuko hapa tukijipeana why are we here because there is a price it is 100 here on earth 100% here on earth and we will be inheritors of the kingdom of god amen tuko tayari eh
praise on jala hapa unaimba tu unaimba tu unajui anything unaimba si ndio my brother unaimba tu unaruka tu eh let's just go into another eh masai kai yesu katila I think it is important that we have an interpreter so that every one of us will be brought on board in Jesus name. Let's celebrate celebrate my interpreter Pastor Gakoe in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ningetaka kabla afike ukaweza kusalimia aliye karibu na wewe, mwambie umefanya vizuri kuja kwa kogamano ya siku ya leo. Eh, mwambie ninafurahia nikikuona. Amen. Amen. That is powerful. We thank God. As you have a hand and it has been announced, this is not a Mathera conference. This is a Nyeri County conference. 
And uh, I want to thank God because I have seen there is a sister in our midst. Our sister in our midst. Our sister in Christ. In our midst. Amen. Amen. And she has really worked so hard to make sure that this water will be drained. What are you doing? We are trying all our best to make sure that this water is going to be drained. And I can see her over there. Can you just stand up and, and do, do like this? We appreciate your effort. Wow, wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He, she has a team that is working on the ground. I also thank God that uh, when Bishop Obed was leading us for intercessory prayer concerning this water. He read us in a strong prayer and pray that they may Lord set sunshine and drink this water. <laughs> and by that time it was raining. Amen. And I thank God because there was no sign of sun. But we can witness there is sun all over. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So tomorrow we are going to see a change in, in, uh, in, in, on this ground. And we thank God. I was saying that this conference covers the whole of Nyeri County. And we appreciate for the vision that God gave our brother director for this uh, Peniel Interdenominational Conference. International Conference. And I know very well he knew that it is on a rainy season. <laughs> but that one could not deter him to pursue his vision. Together with his lovely wife Joyce. And therefore I have spotted a, a referent from Teto who is with us. Shukaji si mama ufanya hivi. Nogamba weki oguwa. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe sana. He is the pastor's chairman from Teto sub-county. Nive mwikari ligete wa kiugano yatu katilikore ya Teto. Please, we have other people outside Madeira. Can you raise your hand? Yeah, we would want to recognize you. Just stand up. Let's appreciate them with a better clap in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So when we say that this is a Nyeri County Conference, we have seen that. And therefore, at this time, we thank God because we have had a good session for the worship. And, and uh, we are ready now to hear the word of God before we enter into. A third session. And uh, before I invite our director, I have with I, I have with me my wife. Just stand and say and wave. Thank you, thank you. We have also come with our firstborn son. I don't know whether he is around. I spotted him. Oh, he is there. Edwin, 
Thank you very much. Tomorrow we are coming full house. By the grace of God. So at this juncture, allow me to welcome our one and only director of PIC. That uh, he may come and bring to us the speaker of this hour. Let's join our hands and clap for the Lord as he comes. I listened to this young man uh, when he was doing an interview this morning in Inoro TV. And I think I came to know him much better than I knew him before. This is a leader. And this is a man who can bring transformation not only in Yeri County, but even in the whole world globally. I listened to him. He is doing PhD. That's the philosophy of doctorate in economics. the first degree, amefanya masters, sasa ako. And afanya PhD by the grace of God. And I, I saluted him. But this is the man who is doing doctorate in economics. And we really thank God for that. Imagine the doctorate wa Wa, 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 wa Christian education. Christian education. So I thank God. I salute you, sir, for the vision that the Lord has given you. And thank God for risking your resources to make sure that where you were born, we have the privilege to hold the very first peak conference as you go to other counties. Madam Joyce, thank you for supporting this man. Amen. Amen. We salute you, Amen. Amen. So, Dr. Ari. Karibu sana. Amen. <laughs> Thank you very much, Reverend George Guandaru. Watch out, Mpigia Makofi and Apoketi. I am feeling shy when you are given such a hefty introduction. But that is not why we were risking what he has. He used the term risking the resources. That is not. That was not the reason. We just came here because of the reason I'm going to read to you from the word of God. Through the vision that God gave me on October 3rd, 2023. I didn't want you to know what I do behind the scenes. Hallelujah. Amen. To I didn't. Uh, I'm sorry, and I apologize. But this is the reason why we are here. Now, in the book of uh, Second First Timothy, chapter two, uh, verse five, the Bible says, "For there is one God." 
one mediator between God and mankind the man Christ Jesus hallelujah Amen. that man in verse 6 the Bible says who gave himself as a ransom for all people Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is for all. That is what my Bible tells me. It means nobody was excluded. It is for all of us. The one who was given us a ransom for all of us. It is the reason why we are here in the, in the peak conference. And may, and may he receive all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I honor our fathers who are in the house. You know, I was listening to one of the apostles who blesses me, Apostle Selman. And he was saying in one of the sermons that the young generation that does not honor the fathers they have no opportunity of being handed over the mantle so I honor these fathers because when I told them about a vision that God put in me they received me very well and they have been supportive since that time and that is why we are here for Jesus for Jesus nothing else let nobody talk about me like Leverett Guadaru <laughs> hallelujah yes amen I am a happy man of God. Therefore, God put a burden about popularizing Jesus Christ. And the reason why we are here, it is Him. Brethren, let us just join hard and worship Him. In the first session, I was telling you, when our places, our worship go up, the glory of God gonna come down hallelujah Amen. I'm saying the glory of God gonna come down when our places and our worship will be accepted to him may he receive all the glory during the Daniel interdenominational conference in Nyeri and in all the other counties that God will mandate us to go and also all the other nations in Jesus name I'm here to do one thing to introduce a man of God who is going to speak to us this evening and this is a man I revere very much because where we have come from we were working with him in a country called Somalia when we were doing advisory services for the governments it is what at the World Bank is called the fragile states hallelujah the, the, the countries that have wars every time. Hallelujah. Amen. And we met when we were designing tax systems for that country. Under the World Bank project. Hallelujah. Amen. So the man of God I'm bringing to you. 
During that interaction for three years. Tukifika Mogadishu. When we reach Mogadishu. Tulikuwa tunasikia bomi ilikuwa hapa watu watu ya moja wa meaga dunia. There was an explosion of a bomb that killed a hundred people. And therefore you can only get courage from the person seated next to you. And seeing that for three years God saved our lives. We have all the reason to declare Jesus <laughs> as our savior. Hallelujah. Amen. He is also a pastor in the great county of Kirinyaga. He is a staunch farmer. If you want to do dairy farming, this is the place to go. I personally wanted to get that mantle. And I succeeded only for two years. Young men, we have a lot to receive from our fathers. And servants of God and all brethren, I request you to stand up and help me welcome Pastor Simon Mwangi. Together with the interpreter, so that they come, he comes here, and we give him the altar to continue. Welcome, Pastor George. Please let's appreciate him as he comes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Karibu sana. When you have fathers like this, he told me the other day he is a senior citizen in this country. And all that is left for him, it is to release blessings to the younger generation. When I shared with him the vision that God put in me, he blessed me. Hallelujah. Amen. Please help me welcome the man of God, Pastor Simon Mwangi, so that he can continue. Amen. Let's pray for him. Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, may you receive glory through the ministration of your one. Through your servant, speak to us in accordance to your will. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all of us say, Amen. Amen. Welcome. Amen. Thank you, uh, Michael. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, my daughter. Asante, Tumisho Mungu, Michael. Asante, Binti Angu. Thank you, the parents of Michael. Asante, kwa wazazi. I saw, wa, I saw them somewhere. Wa mkurugenzi, Michael, niliona mahale flani. Uh, I think it is a great privilege to stand before you. Najua kwa mani heshi maisi ohaba, mimi kusimama mbele zenu wapendwa. And uh, I shall ask you to sit down so that we can fellowship together. Nitaomba tafadhali tuweze kuketi ili tushirikiane pamoja. Let me say this from the start. Niseme yafuatayo kutoka utangulizi huu. The word of God neno la mungu is life. Ni uzima. The word of God neno la mungu he is powerful. The word of God is the food of believers. The word of God sustains not only life, but hope in life. Uh, allow me to start by saying about myself because Many of you don't know me. Nirusu ni seme ya kwangu, mana wengi wenu na jua kwamba hamu ni fahamu. Naitua Simon Mwangi. Naitua, he's called Simon Mwangi. I live in Kirinyaga. Naishi katika jimbo la Kirinyaga. 
Therefore I am from the diaspora when you are in Nyeri. Hivyo mimi niko diaspora ama niko nje eneo maeneo haya madam mwapo Nyeri. the Lord is my shepherd and the savior and the redeemer. Bwana ni mkombozi na mwokozi wangu na mtetezi wangu. And since September uh, 1994 na September mwaka 1994 When I bowed down and called upon the name of the Lord Nilip and received salvation Niliposujudu mbele zake na nikampokea kama mwokozi wa maisha yangu nikapokea wokovu He continues to pour blessings upon my life Anazidi kumimina baraka zake juu ya maisha yangu I am working in progress in terms of salvation Mimi ni kandarazi katika uendelezi katika huduma na katika ufalme wa Kristo Uh, I'm married to one wife who is Veronica. Nimeoa kwa nimeoa mke mmoja wa jinsi ya kike kwa jina lake Veronica. And uh, I'm blessed with a son who is a minister of the gospel. Nimebarikiwa kuwa na mwana wa kiume na ni muhuduma wa injili ya Kristo. Na three daughters who are also saved and they have their families. Na binti watatu ambao tayari ni watu wazima na wanajamii za kwao. I worship in a ministry called the Rivers of Life Worship Ministry in now, Kagio. Na hudumu katika huduma inaitwa the uh, Rivers of Hope kule Kagio. Rivers of Life. Rivers of Life kule Kagio. And uh, I grew up and cut my teeth as a worshiper in uh, Sitam Karen Nairobi. Nilikuwa na kupata mizizi yangu katika huduma kule Karen Nairobi, Sitam. Therefore I would say I was prepared in Nairobi niseme kwamba bwana alinitarisha nikiwa katika jimbo la Nairobi and I was deployed in Kirinyaga and the diaspora nikatumwa kule Kirinyaga na katika maeneo tofauti tofauti uh, having said so uh, Michael did mention what I'm doing uh, after 60 years nikisha sema hayo mtumishi wa Mungu Michael alisema kwamba leo niatenda katika miaka 60 kwa sasa It pleases my heart to be called a cowboy or a shepherd. Yapendezwa kuitwa mtumishi ama mchungaji. Because when the children of Israel were in Egypt, maana watu wa Israel walipokuwa kule Misri, Joseph advised them to meet the Pharaoh. Yusuf akawashauri wapatane na Farao. Na aliwashauri oh no he advised them to say that they raise sheep therefore they are shepherds. Akawashauri kwamba waseme kwamba wao ni wachunga bifugo basi wao ni wachungaji wa kondovi kama kama mambo kama yale. And with that introduction na kwa utangulizi kama ule the pharaoh commanded his nation to allow Israel to settle in Goshen the most fertile part of Egypt mtawala wa Misri ndiye farao akaruhusu wana wa Israeli wakatengwa maeneo fulani ambayo iko maskani wafuge mifugo yao kule therefore i'm humble to say that i received the anointing of a shepherd nina furaha kwamba kusema kwamba nimepokea mafuta ya uchungaji Having said so let me say that uh, the authentic word of God is what we are going to expose in the next few minutes. Nikisema hayo basi ningependa kusema kwa maana la Mungu ndio tutaenda kuingia kwalo kwa muda si mrefu sasa. And by way of introduction let me say the word of God is a narrative presented by God himself about himself his son Jesus Christ and it is inspired by the holy spirit ni sema kwa la mungu kwamba ni usemi utokao kwake mwenyewe umewakilishwa kwetu kupitia njia ya bwana wetu Yesu Kristo akiwa mwokozi wetu Yesu Kristo na kwetu sisi sasa ikafika ikafika injili this authentic word of god ni neno hakika na hadili is presented in the holy bible limeakilishwa katika kitabu takatifu ndicho biblia in two segments katika eneo ama sehemu mbili ya kwanza the, the first one is the old testament ya kwanza ndio agano la kale which has that in books iliyo na takriban vitabu 39 the second one is the new testament ya pili ndio ikiwa agano jipya which has 27 books ile la vitabu 27 the two books speak about god's plan for the redemption of man and the transformation of sinners to be saints vitengo viwili vya maandiko na lakana na jipya inaenea kuhusu uokovu wa Yesu wa Yesu Kristo ama neno la Mungu leta Yesu Kristo kimtaliza Yesu Kristo akiwa ndio mwokozi wa maisha yetu 
in Timothy 2 chapter 3 verse 16 Katika Timotheo wa pili 6:16 This word is called scripture. Nile ndio inaitwa kwamba ni andiko. Na and uh, he writes and says that uh, all scripture is God breathed or articulated and is useful for three things. Manaweza kwa neno Mungu ni pumzi ya Mungu iliyowekwa kwetu sisi iliyoweza inaweza inafanya mambo matatu yafuatayo. Is useful for teaching. Ina ni muhimu kwa kufundisha. Is useful for rebuking. Ina tumika kwa kukemea. Is useful for correcting. Ni muhimu kukusaisha ama kukosoa. And finally it is useful in training uh, servants in righteousness. Na ni muhimu kuwafunza watakatifu katika haki ya Mungu ama wateule katika haki ya Mungu. God himself uses scripture to train his servants. Mungu mwenyewe hutumia maandiko yake kuwafundisha ama kutia mafunzo watumishi wake ama kanisa lake and to thoroughly equip the servants his servants for every good work na kuami kanisa lake kwa kila kazi iliyo njema and that good work is direct towards the fulfillment of the great commission na hiyo kazi njema basi ni utimilifu wa ile ile wito mkuu tuliopewa uh, in Matthew 28 in Matthew 28 sawa 19 to 20 19 hata 20 is where the great commission ndipo, is spelled out ndipo wito ule mkubwa umeelezwa ama umefafanuliwa wazi this is a charge or a command from the lord jesus christ himself in amri ama agizo kutoka kwa bwana wetu yesu kristo tena yeye mwenyewe he first gave it to the 12 apostles aliwapatia wale mitume 12 then later on he appointed another 72 an additional 72 apostles atimae akawazidisha wengine 72 mitume and he gave them the same commission akawapatia wito huo huo and after that we every believer and the witness of jesus christ baada hiyo kila muumini na kila shahidi wa kikristo yesu is commanded to take the word of god to all nations of the earth ameamuriwa kulichukua na mungu na kupeleka katika pembe zote za ulimwengu in uh, the words of matthew it says go and make disciples of all nations katika kitabu cha madhani inasema kwamba enendeni mkafanya wanafunzi kutoka katika mataifa yote baptizing them in the name of the father mkiwabatiza katika jina la baba and the son na la mwana and the holy spirit na roho mtakatifu teaching them to obey everything i have commanded you mkiwafundisha kuyazingatia yote niliyoamuru thus jesus gave the instruction huyu ni yesu akipeana maagizo na maelezo for disciples and the believers kwa wanafunzi na wateule to become his witnesses kufanyika mashahidi wake kristo in three important places katika maeneo maeneo tatu ilizo mwafa kamno the first one is jerusalem ya kwanza ni jerusalem for you and me jerusalem is the neighborhood in which you live ah katika jerusalem yako basi wewe ni katika mahali pokaa na ujirani wa kwako and of course uh, our pastor michael is working in obedience to start ministry in Jerusalem. Na mchungaji Michael anataka kuanza pia huduma yake vile vile katika Yerusalemu yake. In the second place it, it, it says in all Judea. Mali pa pili ni katika Judea yote. Judea is the area in the neighborhood of where you live. Judea and it could be extensive are expansive you dare ila kwa kama ni ujirani wakati unakoishi inaweza kuwa ni ujirani lakini ita kuzidi ujirani vile vile and samaria na samaria those three places are well known in the middle east hayo maeneo matatu yanajulikana kule mashariki kule israeli but the command also directed that this witnessing go to the edges of the earth lakini tunajua kwamba amri hii ilikuwa inapaswa kuenda katika pembe zote za dunia i'm saying therefore uh, by the way that is recorded in uh, acts 1 and verse 8 nasema haya imenakiliwa katika matendo ya mitume 1 mstari wake ni 8 i'm saying we have come 
to this great Karatina Stadium. Tumekuja katika uwanja huu mkubwa wa Karatina not to buy wares although we know there is a large market here sio kununua vifaa vya soko jambo tulio kwamba kuna soko kubwa huko karatina not to visit as we know there are very hospitable community in the city ama kuzuru katika maeneo maana tunajua kuna kuna maslahi mema ya wapendo wa eneo hili not to see beautiful sights although we know there is a very very beautiful part of the country na si kwa na maeneo mazuri ya eneo hili ya mlima Kenya haja jambo tunajua kwamba kuko na maeneo mazuri sana katika eneo hili but we have come as messengers of Jesus Christ walakini tumekuja kama wajumbe wa Yesu Kristo his own witnesses to the divine power of the cross shahidi wake mkuu katika kazi iliyokamilika ya msalaba and to the authority of the word of god and to salvation for our souls na kwa mamlaka ya Yesu Kristo na kwa wokovu wa nafsi zetu healing of diseases kwa kuponywa kwa magonjwa casting out evil spirits na kutimua maroho chafu and to declare that the kingdom of god is come na kutangaza kwamba ufalme wa Mungu naam umefika to empower communities living around the city kutia nguvu maeneo na ujira na maeneo ya wapendo wanaokaa katika eneo hili la mlima Kenya and those working in the territories around the mount Kenya na wafanya kazi katika vitongoji na miji na zingira ya mlima Kenya uh, i had a challenge in uh, figuring out why the word authentic was included in the topic for discussion this afternoon nilikuwa na shida kidogo kwa nini neno uhalali ikaongezwa katika mazungumzo ama mkataba alasiri ya leo many words are spoken maneno mengi uzungumzwa many words are written maneno mengi yamenakiliwa many words are coined maneno mengi yameigwa but the word of god bali neno la mungu is the word itself and it stands alone and in this narrative i'm calling it the word Ndi, of god ndilo nalojiweka peke yake limesimama peke yake kwa uwezo ndilo la kuaminika na ndio nalita basi hilo ndilo neno la mungu and this word of god na neno la mungu hilo is written and preserved so that it shall be read limeandikwa na kuhifadhiwa ili liweze kusomwa it shall be studied liweze kuchambuliwa it shall be memorized liweze kukaririwa it shall be applied to transform and sustain life in our people kutumika katika kubadilisha maisha ya watu mbalimbali uh, there is something about this word which i love with the jewish people kuna kitu nalopenda kuhusu neno hili katika watu wa yahudi in the old testament katika siku za kale katika agano la kale the people of god were instructed watu wa mungu waliagizwa to write this word waandike neno hili waweke kama uh, they put it like uh, uh, an ornament waeke, around their necks waweke kama chepeo ama vidokezi vya 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 kujirembesha kwenye shingo lao they write it on the door Wan, through which they go into their own houses waandike katika mimo ya milango wanaingilia kwayo they write it in the uh, gateway waandike katika malango wanapoingia madamu and they teach their children and the grandchildren na wafundishe wanao na wajukuu wao this word of god neno la mungu hili this word is powerful hili neno lina nguvu kanisa it has benefited Jews in the whole world limewasaidia na kuwawezesha wayahudi katika ulimwengu wote not just those Jews who believe in Jesus Christ sio wayahudi pekee walio muamini Yesu Kristo even those of Judaism who deny the power of God upon Jesus Christ hata wale wa uyahudi walio kataa nguvu za Mungu ama kuinkuja kwake Yesu Kristo kama Masihi when it comes to reaping the benefits of this word wakati napokuja katika swala ya kupata faida za neno hili they step forward wanakanyaga mbele and they say we don't negotiate na wanasema mjadala sisi hatuna kwa hili because this is our inheritance kwa sababu huu ndio urithi wetu this word is ours from abraham up to now neno hili ni letu kutoka asili kutoka baba yetu ibrahim hata leo so when a Jew a merchant is 
putting in a tender for any job e mchuzi wa muyahudi anapochukua kazi yote anaotaka kuifanya even before delivering the tender hata kabla kupeana vidokezi vya kupata ile ajira ama kazi he speaks to that situation anazungumzia ile hali kwanza using the word of god akilitumia neno la mungu he says anasema ifuatayo god you are the father of abraham isaac and jacob e mungu uliye baba ibrahim isaac na yakobo I'm descended from these patriarchs. Mimi nimetoka kwa mababa wa imani. All your promises to them. Adi zako zote kwao. Are my inheritance. Ni urithi wa kwangu. And I'm putting this tender here. Na mimi naweka tenda hii hapa. As a child of Abraham. Kama mwana wa Ibrahimu. Remove every competitor from my way. Ondoa mshindani yote mbele zangu bwana. And I believe you me. Na amini wewe mpendwa. Even those who don't know Jesus Christ. Hata wasiomjua bwana Yesu Kristo. They win those tenders. Wanafaulu like, kupata tenda zile. Like lightning. Mara moja kama umeme. Let me say this. Niseme hivi. Uh, those who cannot read the word of God are unfortunate. Wale kwa bahati mbaya wasioweza kulisoma neno la Mungu. But the saving grace is this. Lakini neema hiyo kwao ndio hii. Wherever you will go, popote uwapo, you will find somebody able to read the word of God. Utapata mtu aliye na uwezo wa kulisoma la Mungu. So wale kibaki alikuwa anaitwa wakubafu, wale ambao hawawezi kusoma. Wa eh kubafu. Wale ambao walikuwa hawajui kusoma, hawajelimika kwa kusoma. Uh, the word shall be read to them. Neno la Mungu litasomwa kwao. The spirit of God will put it in their hearts. Roho Mtakatifu ataweka neno hilo atahakishe kwamba limeingia kwao limefika. The spirit of God will imprint it on their minds. Roho Mungu atafanya lichapishwe katika nia na fikra zao. They will remember the word. Na watakumbuka neno hilo hata ikiwa even if they are not able to cite the, 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 the where it is written. Hata kama hizi kunukulu imeandikwa wapi katika kitabu kipi katika Biblia? They shall hear the good news of the gospel. Watasikia habari njema ya injili. And those who lack understanding, na wale watakosa ufahamu ama maarifa, the word shall be explained to them. Neno litaelezwa kwao. Those who will have forgotten the word, wale watakuwa wamelisahau neno ya mkini, they shall be reminded of it. Na watakumbushwa because God has placed great value in his word. Kwa sababu Mungu ameweka dhamana kubwa mno katika neno lake. The Bible says, Biblia inasema, he has so highly exalted his word that he places it above his own name hivi amelitukuza neno lake mno hata likazidi majina ya kwake ukiangalia psalm 138 verse 2 zaburi 138 mstari wake wa pili will direct you to that uh, value that God has placed on his word. Itakuelekeza katika ubamana ambao Bwana ametwika katika neno lake. I'm saying the word of God has power. Nasema na Mungu lina nguvu to change and transform lives and situations. Kubadilisha na kugeuza hali. Uh, in the beginning. Hapo uh, mwanzo. Uh, in the book of Genesis. Kitabu cha mwanzo. God used his word spoken to achieve the entire process of creation. Mungu atumia neno lake liozungumzwa kuafikiana makusudi yake ya umbaji. Nine times the Bible records that God said. Mara tisa maandiko yana nakili kwamba na Mungu akasema. And whatever he said, na chochote alichosema revealed the power that is in his word ilifichua uweza uliotanda kwa neno kwa jina lake kwa neno lake as those things that had never existed na katika vitu ambavyo havikuwahi kuishi came into existence vikawa katika hali ya kuishi for the very first time kwa mara ya kwanza katika maisha yote he used his word to create all things including mankind tumia neno neno lake kumba vitu vyote akiwemo vile vile mwanadamu that is in genesis 1 from verse 3 to 29 you, know, mwanzo, you, you, you see how god worked for six days kutoka mstari uh, wa mstari wa kwanza mpaka 26 hapo na vile mungu alifanya kazi katika siku sita and when he created something alipomba kitu he would stand angesimama and look at it na kutazama and he would declare na angetangaza wata uh, inafaa watu wapia yeah. tatuelei tuambieni he would declare it is good it is kwamba ni nzuri 
if, if he was a lawyer he would have said isikuti kama angekuwa mlui angesema isikuti seven eight times he said it is good mara saba mara nane alisema kwamba na ni nzuri and when he created the last thing na alipomba cha mwisho he observed and said it is very good akasema ni nzuri sana Uh, if it was in modern english he would have said it was excellent kama ingekuwa kimombo yasa ingesema kwamba kwamba imezidi hata ubora hapo ungepiga makofi lakini hata ina mnachelewa sana hata kupigia mtumishi wa Mungu makofi kanisa la bwana thank you so much thank you sir uh, kikobe ingine acha yatapewa kwa kunitetea uh, yeah. <laughs> A careful reading of the book of John. Umakinifu wa kutoma kusoma kitabu kitabu cha injili ya Yohana. And I'm looking at John chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. Kutoka kitabu cha Yohana sura ya kwanza mstari wa kwanza hata 4. It reveals that the word existed before all creation. Inafichua kwa la Mungu kwa maana la Mungu liishi kabla misingi ya ulimwengu ama kabla chochote kingine kikiwemo. The word resided with God. Neno likuwa na Mungu and he used the word. Na alitumia neno hilo to create all things that were made kumba vitu vyote vionekanavyo the word was alive and it was a he who was with god even before the beginning of creation neno lilikuwa na mungu lilikuwa yeye mwenyewe kristo na alikuwa pamoja na mungu hapo mwanzo coming from this part of the country kutoka katika eneo hili la sehemu ya nchi When we see the male gender tukiona watu wa jinsia ya kiume wanaume wan, start attention wanaume wakisimama wima the word i think in first three says neno katika the word was a he neno la Mungu sawa kwamba ilikuwa ikawa yeye ama mtu wa jinsia ama ikawa jinsia ya kiume and in first four it says it is through him ni kumpitia yeye huyo basi the word neno that all things were made ambapo vitu vyote viliumbwa and the word was life a delight to all mankind na neno likuwa uzima na nuru kwa kila mwanadamu uh, i don't know about you when you read those four verses sijui kukuhusu wewe unaposoma mistari ile minne ya kitabu cha injili ya Yohana sura ya kwanza mstari wa kwanza hata wa From my understanding katika kuelewa kwangu I'm persuaded the word was he nime, was a he nimeshawishika kwa maneno la Mungu likuwa basi ndiye yeye basi wa jinsia ya kiume and the word was Jesus Christ neno, the son of God na neno likuwa Yesu Kristo mwana wa Mungu whom God gave freely ambao Mungu alipeana bure so that mankind would be redeemed ili mwanadamu aweze kukombolewa and in John 3:16 na katika Yohana 3:16 is recorded boldly imenakiliwa tena kwa ushupavu for god so loved the world kwa maana jinsi mungu aliupenda ulimwengu that he gave his one and only son hata akamtoa mwana wake tena wa pekee that whoever believes in him ili awa yote amwaminie yeye shall not perish asipotee but have eternal life bali hawe na uzima wa milele I think you are missing another opportunity to clap. Na kisia mnakosa nafasi nyingine ya kumpatia bwana Yesu makofi kwa neno lake la ajabu. Now in John 14 katika Yohana sura ya 14 uh, at verse 6 na mstari wake wa sita. Jesus Yesu the word of God ambaye ni neno la Mungu says concerning himself anasema kujusu yeye mwenyewe uh, three critical things mambo matatu yaliyo muhimu sana and he says i am the way akasema mimi ndimi njia i am the truth mimi ndimi kweli adam at the life na mimi ndimi uzima no one comes to the father apana ama hakuna ajaye kwa baba except through me ila kupitia kwangu if you removed and don't do it don't do it Uka, if you removed jesus from that statement we have read above ukaondoa na usidhubutu kufanya vile ukaondoa yesu katika usomo ambao tulisoma hapo juu you can also say unaweza kusema ifuatayo the word of god neno la mungu is the way ni njia is the truth ni kweli is the life na ni uzima 
and this is the highway to heaven na hii ndio njia kuu ya kuelekea mbinguni another opportunity missed haleluya asanteni barikiwe there is overwhelming evidence even in kenya kuna ushahidi peupe tena unaotiririka hapa hata kenya that communities who accepted the word of god ya kwamba jumuiya zilizokubali neno la mungu individual households who accepted the word of god watu binafsi nyumba na boma zilizokubali neno la mungu those who received the message of salvation walipokea ujumbe wa wokovu from the christian missionaries kutoka kwa missionary wa kristo their lives were transformed maisha yao yalibadilishwa their lives were enriched maisha yao yalitajirishwa they gained salvation for their souls walipata wokovu wa nafsi zao they received useful knowledge for living walipokea maarifa ya kipekee ya kuweza kuishi and na they resulted in their being famous It that people who are famous ikal gained wealth ikaleta which has been enjoyed as an inheritance up to now ikaleta swala la kujulikana mno ambayo ileta furaha na ushindi mwingi katika maisha ya watu wengi mno uh, mshugaji michael unajua kuna uh, there is a, a, a community around the tomotomo hill unajua mchungaji michael kuna jamii katika mlima uh, katika eneo la tomotomo pale I know most of you will know that community. Najua mnajua jamii inaoishi katika eneo la Tomotomo pale. When I was a little young man, nilipokuwa kijana mchanga, the place was known as kwa bare ya Jora. Eneo lilijulikana kwamba ni jamii ya bare ya Jora. Eh tukienda shule migutupu. Eh tulipokuwa tuna shuleni migutupu, wale walikuwa wanafaa heavy shoes. Those ones were putting on serious shoes. Eh wakati sikukuu imekuja when christmas was at hand and the chapati was smelling in there na chamati chapati zinanuka kila mahali eneo kila kule kulikuwa kunanuka hata nyama ya kuchoma ya mbuzi even roasted a uh, uh, goat was smelling in that place up to now hata kufika sasa their children and their grandchildren a uh, watoto wao na wajukuu wao they have a tremendous amount of education wako na elimu ya kiwango cha juu sana pale They have jobs in government and in industry. Wako na kazi ka, ah, na, 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 na ajira katika serikali na katika viwanda tofauti tofauti. They have large holdings of land. Wana mashamba kubwa tena ah, nyingi sana katika nchi hii. Those who accepted Christ around this uh, region. Waliomkubali Kristo katika eneo hili la mlima Kenya hapa. Not only did they get expensive pieces of land. Si kwamba walipata mashamba makubwa but they also were holders of the currency of the day lakini walikuwa wa milki wa mali nyingi ya siku ya pesa za sasa pia and these two items uh, are the bearers and the carriers of wealth na hivi vitu viwili ndio vya beba ukwasi ama utajiri wa nchi these two things helps to generate and multiply Wealth that is being enjoyed by their great great grandchildren. Vitu hivi vilisaidia kuongeza mali inayofurahiwa ama kusherekewa na watoto na wajukuu na vitukuu na vilembwe na vilembekweza. Examples of communities that were privileged to receive the word of God. Kwa mfano jamii zilizopata fursa ya kupokea neno la Mungu is not just in Tumutumu. Sio Tumutumu peke yake. We have communities around Thogoto. Ni kuna jamii pia eneo la Thogoto. There are communities allowed Kijabe. Kuna jamii katika eneo la Kijabe. Uh, there are communities allowed Shogoria in Meru. Kuna eneo a jamii katika kule Chogoria Meru. Uh, kuna communities allowed Maseno and Nyangori in Western Kenya. Kule jamii kule Maseno katika sehemu ya magharibi mwa nchi. And in the coast there are communities allowed Rabai. Na kule pwani katika sehemu inayozunguka Raba. Uh, these people are wealthy and exceedingly wealthy watu hawa ni wakwasi mabwenyenye wa kupindukia <laughs> watajiri sana uh, i'm not saying that uh, you take the gospel sisemi uchukue injili wewe uende ulale au uh, ukome ama uende just go and sleep alafu utajiri utaingia mifukoni kwako and, and then wealth comes and sleeps through your pockets 
Just like that. Hapana. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying there is power in the gospel. There is power in the word of God. That instills discipline. It transforms ordinary knowledge. Into wisdom. And this wisdom enables you to do efficient running it uh, creates excellence in it, your work inaleta ubora katika utekelezi wako wa kazi and that a discipline that results from hard work na ile nidhamu inotokana na jitihada na kufanya kazi bora is rewarded by god inapatiwa thawabu na mungu because kwa sababu God instructs the owner of new resources where to invest. Mungu anamwagiza yule mwekezaji atawekeza wapi? As a bishop Gwandaro was speaking, kama mtumishi wa Mungu Gwandaro alivyokuwa anazungumza hapa, I did not recognize Michael. Sikumtambua mtumishi wa Mungu Michael. But instantly, lakini kwa ghafla, I got a glimpse nikapata ule ufahamu wa, wa ndogo hivi tusemi of the divine interventions in Michael's life ya kuingilia kati kwa maswala ya kiungo katika maisha ya mtungaji Michael Michael is an expert in investment planning bwana Michael ni mtaalamu katika swala ya uwekezaji investment analysis ha katika usemi ama uchambuzi wa uwekezaji and selection of viable opportunities na uchaguzi wa fursa ambazo ni haba lakini zilizo za mwafaka mno this word neno hili la Mungu this word i'm talking about neno ambalo nazungumza kwenu siku ya leo is the one that has given michael ndilo limempatia bwana michael insight into where to invest mtazamo wa kujua atawekeza hivi wapi when i entered this uh, crowd nilipoingia katika uwanja huu I could not remember seeing these structures when I was growing up. Ni sikukumbuka kama nimewahi kuona mjengo kama hii nilipokuwa nakua ama nalelewa hivi. And Michael uh, briefing me just told me that all oh, this is portable. Bwana Michael akaniambia kwamba vitu hivi vyote vya bebeka ni vitu vya kuchukuliwa vikabebwa. He has invested in the entire structures. Amewekeza katika mijengo yote hii, the equipment, na vifaa, the technology, na teknolojia and the know-how, na ufahamu wa kujua that would make it for this place to sit over 10,000 people. Itafanya watu zaidi ya 10,000 waweze kutulia kwa starehe katika mahali kama hapa. The Bible says. Biblia inasema, in first in the kingdom of god wekeza katika ufalme wa mungu invest in the kingdom of god wekeza katika ufalme wa mungu nasema tena where there will be no moss amabwa kuna nundu and there will be no rust na kuna kuoza and there will be no thieves na kuna jambasi atakayeiba to steal your investment kuiba rasilimali zako kama wekezaji wako If I was writing that scripture I would have added Ningeongeza you want to get the highest return on us Ungependa kupata haja ziada mno katika ulimwengu Invest in the kingdom of Wekeza God Wekeza katika ufalme wa Mungu kanisa It is a profitable investment Ni wekezaji usio na hasara lakini uko na faida tu being a, 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 a livestock farmer nikiwa mkulima wa mifugo i'm ever intrigued by the miracles that uh, jacob uh, performed upon the livestock of his uh, in laws mimi utibuliwa na miujiza aliyofanya yakobo katika boma la wakwezi ati anaenda na uh, he goes and picks some twigs anachukua miti fulani anapambua When the goats and the sheep and the cows were coming to drink wakati kondoo na mbuzi wakuja kunywa maji pale he would say abdra kadabla anasema kadabla kadabla na his wages wale wanono ukwasi wake the increase ongezeko would tilt in his favor ungeenda ukininginia upande wa kwake 
I have tried this abracadabra. Nimejaribu swala hili la pata pale abracadabra. I had a mukulino waka. Nilikuwa na mfanyakazi wa kiremba mukulino. And we believe that these wakulinos have a special anointing. Tunaamini kwamba wakulino wako na mafuta ya kipekee. And I asked this man to come with the word of God. Nikamza na mtu huyu aje na neno la Mungu. And I came with my English version. Na mimi nikaja na tafsiri yangu ya kimombo. And we camped inside the cow boma. Tukaja katika boma la ngombe pale. And we started calling upon heaven. Tukaanza kuita mbingu. Oh let the spirit of increase Wata. come upon this this boma. Rongeze kwa tande katika boma hili. Ongeza ya kike. Ongeza ya no ege. Ongeza ingine. Ongeza ya kiume. Increase the female and males. Ongeza hii dogo. In Increase the little ones. Increase the big ones. You who is the God of Jacob? And you allowed him to perform this miracle. Now perform it for us in the name of Jesus. You might think it was in jest. Mombe our cows in Christ. Let me tell you ngombe waliongezeka. Buzi iliongezeka. The goats increased in number. Until this mukulino one day came and told me. Mpaka siku moja mukulino akaja akaniambia, "Idoishi ne shige hira mono." Ah, mifugo hawa mezidi kabisa jamani. Badala ya kuniambia aongezewe mshahara kwa maana mali imepanuka instead of telling me to increase his salary because the wealth has really increased complaining that uh, our prayers were answered akaanza kuniambia kwamba maombi yetu sasa yamejibiwa nikamwambia mkulino what's wrong with you i told him mkulino uni nini shida na wewe jamani ni mshahara is it the salary that you want ama unashukia mungu kwa maana alijibu maombi yetu or you now hate god because of increasing my wealth jamani how church let me tell you i didn't want be Put the word of God where you are. Weka na Mungu mahali unapofanya kazi. Na mahali ulipo. The word of God where you are going. Weka na Mungu unakoenda. Put the word of God over your children. Weka na Mungu juu ya watoto wako. Put the word of God over your grandchildren w and their, 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 their generations. Weka na Mungu juu ya watoto wajukuu wako, wajukuu wako na vizazi vyao. In your old age. Katika ukongwe wako, you will be amazed. Utastaajabu at the quality of humanity that God creates around you. Katika udhamana wa vitu ambavyo Bwana ameumba kuzingira maisha yako. Now, sasa we need to live the word of God. Tunahitaji kuishi neno la Mungu. Wapendwa. Church I'm saying that all those who received and believed the word of God waliopokea na kuliamini neno la Mungu they were changed by the power that is carried in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Walibadilishwa na nguvu na uweza wa injili ya Yesu Kristo iliyokuwa nayo. First read the 12 apostles. Ya kwanza wale mitume 12 na wawili they were simple men. Walikuwa watu wa rais tu, watu wa kawaida. And I'm not being gender insensitive when I call them men. Na sikui sibagui inapowaita wanaume. They were all men. Walikuwa wanaume kwa hakika. Before they received the word of God, kabla hawapokea la Mungu, many of them were fishermen. Wengi wao walikuwa wavuvi wa samaki. Others were farmers. Wengine walikuwa wakulima. Others were tax officials. Wengine walikuwa watoto wa ushuru. Others were pretending to be doctors. Wengine walikuwa wanakaa kama walikuwa madaktari tuseme. Now when the gospel came upon their lives wakati njili ya bwana ilikuja kwao it is recorded in mark 6 and verse 7 imenakiliwa katika malko 6 na 7 mstari wa 7 matthew 10 and verse 1 to 10 mathayo 10 mstari wa 10 pia and luke chapter 9 and chapter 10 verses 1 to 16 na luke 9 na luka 10 mstari wa 16 that a tremendous empowerment ya kwamba kuimarishwa ama kutiwa nguvu kwa njia kubwa came upon these simple folks kulikuja juu ya watu hawa raisi and they became pioneer evangelists na wakawa wanjilisti maarufu sana na wanzilishi pia jesus gave the 12 disciples power and authority to apply the word of god to their own lives and to empower the communities among whom they live. Yesu aliwapatia wanafunzi wake nguvu hata na mamlaka kutilia mazoezi neno la Mungu juu ya maisha yao na juu ya jamii zao na juu ya jumuiya yote maadamu ataka kukwenda. Their communities were the welfare of their communities was greatly and en en enriched. Jumuiya zao ziliweza kutajirishwa sana kwa neno la Mungu. He gave them the mandate to 
do the following things in his behalf and in his name aliwapatia hatamu kufanya kila kitu kwa jina lake na kwa kwa mamlaka ya jina lake now because there are many people who think that uh, you have to have money first na kwa sababu kuna watu wanafikiri kwamba lazima ukuwe na pesa kwanza and then go to serve god kisha uende umtumikie mungu jesus gave a model that cancels that thinking as nala devoid yesu alileta mtazamo unaokanusha mtazamo huo wa fikra mama wanzo he sent these people out aliwatuma watu hawa nje firstly in uh, in pairs kwanza wakiwa wawili wawili in the bible it is said two by two katika biblia inasema kwamba wawili kwa wawili he sent them out akawatuma and he gave them this charge akawapatia amri fatayo and this charge is what we received when we gained salvation na amri ndio tulipokea tulipopokea wokovu and this charge is what has brought us to this great city na amri nimetuleta katika mji mkubwa wa karatina wapendwa kanitha wa kristo jesus never preached a church yesu hakuhubiri kwa kanisa he never preached a denomination hakuhubiri dhehebu he did not preach a wealthy family hakuhubiri jamii kwasi or great clans ama ukoo uliofuzu ama uliofaulu sana he preached the kingdom of god alihubiri ufalme wa mungu and he commanded these folks to go out there and preach the preach the kingdom of god and declare that the kingdom of god is come alituma wapendwa hawa waende nje wakahubiri ufalme wa mungu na kwamba ufalme wa mungu naam umefika and i'm happy that pic nina furaha kwamba pic is not flying the flag of a church ainui bendera ya kanisa ama dhehebu yoyote it is flying the flag of the kingdom of god inainua bendera ya ufalme wa mungu he commanded them number 2 aliwaamuru jambo la pili to preach repentance of sin and to salvation wakahubiri injili ya toba na msamaha wa dhambi and that's the foundation na naam huo ndo msingi foundation of qualification for those who shall work in the kingdom of god kuitimu ama kuitimu kwa wale watakaofanya kazi katika ufalme wa mungu if you are not saved kama hujaokoka don't waste your time usipoteze muda wako don't waste god's time usipoteze vile vile muda wa mungu if you desire to work in the kingdom ukitamani kufanya kazi katika shamba la bwana ama katika bustani la bwana go repent enda utubu seek, seek salvation tafuta wokovu uh, seek that the name of, your name shall be written in the lamb's book of life tafuta kujua kwamba jina lako limeandikwa katika kitabu cha uzima cha, cha milele kutoka hapo ah cha mwana kondoo kutoka hapo utapata nafasi ya kazi you get to work in the lord's vineyard amen amen, amen. Number 3 jambo la tatu he commanded them to go out there and heal the sick aliwaamuru watoke nje kwenda wakaponye walio wagonjwa na siojiweza number 4 he asked them to cast out evil spirits or demons jambo lana aliwapatia mamlaka ya kutimua maroho machafu na mapepo he also told them to raise the dead aliwapa mamlaka pia kufufua wafu and finally na hatimaye he commanded them to overcome the powers of darkness aliwapatia nguvu ama akapatia uwezo wa kushinda nguvu za giza we want to declare and announce to the city tungependa kusema na kutangaza katika mji huu we are not here to please ourselves hatuko hapa kupendeza nafsi zetu we are here to declare that an opportunity for this city tuko hapa kutangaza kwamba nafasi ya mji huu has been found naam imepatikana by reading of the word of god in jeremiah 37 kusoma kwangu kwa lola bwana kitabu jeremiah 37 it tells me to pray for my city yaniambia kwamba niombe mji wangu to pray for the well for the prosperity of the city niombe kwa fanaka ya mji wa kwangu 
to pray for security and Nyo, safety of our city. Niombe kwa usalama na ubora wa, wa mji wangu. To pray for good leadership and the governance of the city. Niombe kwamba uongozi wema na uelekezi wema katika mji wangu. And there is a reason and a motivation to do so. Na kuna sababu na himizo la kufanya hivyo. The Bible says, Biblia inasema You shall also prosper when you pray for the prosperity of the city. Mtafanikiwa maadam mtakapoombea fanaka ya mji wa kwenu. Watu wa Kalatina hiyo missed another opportunity. Ulikosa nafasi nyingine ya kumshukuru Bwana. This is the first time I'm studying here as an adult. In mali ya kwangu kusema mali hapa kama as an adult. Kama mtu mzima. I have an excellent opportunity. Niko na fursa ya kipekee to lay hands on my city kwekelea mji wangu mkono to lay hands on the leadership of the city kwekelea mkono wangu juu ya uongozi wa eneo hili that the god of all wealth will enrich the city kuomba kwa mungu wa upasu wote akautajirishe mji wa karatina na eneo hili the city will serve its citizens with excellence naomba kwa mji utatumikia wenyeji wake kwa ubora that the municipal services here ya kwa municipal services huduma za services za municipal malahapa you have a great zitakuwa za dhamana kubwa and the connection between the city administration na unganisho kati ya mji huu wa karatina na, na viongozi wake and the private industry na taasisi za za, za binafsi will be beneficial to the citizens of this city zitafaidi wenyeji wa mji huu because i desire wealth natamani utajiri i pray heavenly father that you bless this naomba kwamba bwana ubariki mji huu leo I pray that you increase their wealth many times for. Naomba ukazidishe ukwasi wao mara kuzidi bwana. I pray that you make it a citadel of excellence in manufacturing in enterprise and in raising quality manpower. Naomba kainue taasisi na viwanda vitakaoleta hali kubwa ya eneo la utajiri na na ushindi mkubwa katika eneo hili la Jimbo la Nyeri. I pray that the average church member. Naomba kwamba hesabu na idadi ya kanisa leo ndogo kabisa will be a quality contributor to the kingdom of God. Na wasaita changia pakubwa sana katika ufalme wa Mungu. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo na kila mmoja aseme amen yenye afya. Now Sasa, Jesus called the 12 first Yesu alita wale 12 kwanza and later on he added another 72 disciples Hatimaye kaongeza wengine wanafunzi 72 and brought these people to his bible school Na akawaleta watu hawa katika chuo chake cha Biblia He anointed them Akawatia mafuta He deployed them Akawatuma two by two wawili kwa wawili to reach out to the communities he had mapped out for gospel outreach kufikia jumuiya ambayo alikuwa amelenga shabaha lake kwa kufikia injili ya yake a specific instruction was to preach the gospel maagizo yake haswa ilikuwa kuhubiri injili and declare that the kingdom of god is come na kutangaza kwamba ufalme wa mungu umefika now in order to demonstrate ili kwamba kuweza kudhihirisha the inherent power of the gospel nguvu iliyositirika ya injili uh, to propel and drive those who obey his command kuiskuma na kuendesha wale watakaotii amri yake he forbid these disciples alizuia ama akakataza wanafunzi wake from carrying material things kutobeba vitu vitu vinavyoonekana material things vitu vitu aba vifaa kama mali which the thought or might have thought they will help them to do the work ambao kwamba wangefikiri kwamba itawasaidia kufanya ile kazi ya bwana aliyowapa he said to them akawaambia kale no money wala msibebe mkoba wa fedha no gold hamna dhahabu no silver hamna fedha no copper hamna copper no bags hamna mfuko ama mkoba Walmas. no bread hamna mkate no food hamna chakula no extra shirt hakuna shati ya ziada no extra saddles hakuna jozi ama vazi ama viatu vya ziada kale only a staff beba tu fimbo peke yake fimbo 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 naam hiyo 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 naam fimbo peke yake 
workers in the kingdom watenda kazi katika ufalme wa Bwana would a piece of wood hivi fimbo address of how it is chipped pasipo kujalisha imeumbwa ama imetengezwa namna gani would it pay in a bill ungelipa deni yoyote ama bill yoyote ukiingia kwa matatu uigize fimbo ungeo matatu utakubalishwa kuketi conductor akwambie kuketi kinyosha fimbo yako kuelekea they were to carry only a staff walikuwa bebe tu ile fimbo peke yake there is something hidden here folks i want you to cash kuna kitu liko imefichwa mahali hapa ningependa wapendwa tuipate ila lo, uh, the, the heart of man that tells him in order to serve god i must uh, have uh, a four wheel drive i must have uh, a multi story uh, house and i must have a big shamba and i must have this and the other yale. and my business must be very large yale mwanzo kujabia kwamba lazima nikuwe na gari kubwa niwe na shamba kubwa niwe na mambo makubwa makubwa hili mimi niweza kutumika katika bustani la bwana niwe na vitu vikubwa that is a falsehood and it does not work for the kingdom of god huo ni uongo na wala mambo kama yale hayafanyi kazi katika ufalme wa mungu when moses appeared before pharaoh wakati musa alionekana mbele ya farao and there was trouble in egypt na ukawa na shida kule misri and god had heard the cry of his people na mungu alikuwa amesikia kilio cha watoto wake and his people are crying to be delivered to be redeemed from slavery na watu walikuwa walia kukombolewa toka kwa mateso na masaibu ya wamisri Moses appeared before Pharaoh. Musa katokea mbele ya Farao. And God asked him, "What do you have in your hand?" Mungu akamuuliza, "Je, uko na nini mkononi mwako?" What do you have in your hand? Uko na nini Musa mkononi mwako? And Moses replied, "I have a staff." Musa akasema kwa maana nayo fimbo. And he said, "Drop the drop the staff." Sema angusha hiyo fimbo Musa. Mambo ya ajabu ikafanyika. Something mysterious happened. In the a satanic palace in Egypt katika ikulu ya kipepo kule Misri the 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 the, the, the staff was transformed into a snake ile fimbo ikageuka mara moja ikawa nyoka the bible also says maneno yanasema pia hiyo that snake ah uh, ile nyoka eh uh, swallowed the snakes of the charlatans and the magicians that had been caught to the palace ikameza zile nyoka zilikuwa zimetengenezwa na wale watu wa misri wale wachawi na washirikina wa misri even the pharaoh was frightened hata farao akatingizika was it the snake that uh, delivered the people from egypt ilikuwa nyoka iliyokomboa watu kutoka nchi ya misri was it uh, the tremendous learning that uh, Moses had gained in Egypt? Ilikuwa elimu ya kiwango cha juu ambao Musa alikuwa ameipata kule nchi ya Misri katika ikulu ya mfalme? Was it the connections that Moses had in high places in Egypt? Ilikuwa kujulikana aliyojulikana Musa katika maeneo pakubwa ofisi kubwa kule Misri? We are saying no. Twasema kanisa hapana. We are saying no. Twasema hapana. The power of God was in his word. Nguvu za Mungu zilikuwa katika neno lake. And the Bible says he watches over his word. Inasema kwamba anatazama neno lake in order to perform it. Hata alitimize. The Bible says Biblia inasema the word of god shall not return to him void nala mungu wala halitamrudi abure without accomplishing the purpose for which he sent the word pasipo kutimiza kusudi ambalo kwalo alilituma i'm saying The Bible says that the work of the kingdom shall be accomplished Biblia inasema kwamba ufalme akazi ya ufalme itatimilika not by power sio kwa nguvu not by might wala uweza but by my spirit says the Lord kwa roho wangu asema bwana wa majeshi they preach the kingdom of god walihubiri ufalme wa mungu with only bare hands na mikono mitubu tu hivi with their mouth na vinywa vyao with their minds na nia zao and with their intellect na na utaalamu na ujuzi wao ambao bwana aliwakirimia amen. 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 amen i have news for you nina habari njema kwako these people who went simply in obedience watu hawa walioenenda tu kwa utifu 
They did not go because they were big in stature. Hawakwenda maana walikuwa na kimo kikubwa. They did not go because they had some uh, influences. Hawakwenda maana walikuwa na ushawishi mkubwa. They went because when they were called. Walienda kwa sababu walipoitwa. They answered. Walitika wito. When they were sent. Walipotumwa. They obey. Waliti. They obey. Waliti. Wapendwa is not the resources. Sio raslimani wapendwa. Is a clean heart. Ni moyo safi. That desires to serve the Lord. Unaotamani kutumikia Bwana. That desires to do exploits for the kingdom Una of God. Unaoshaukia kutenda makubwa kwa ufalme wa Mungu. The report they brought. Report walioleta at the Jesus. Yesu. Tusikize. Listen for a minute. At my people. Even demons while at the command of our say praise the lord praise the lord amen uh, we are saying that if you live the word your life maisha yako will be a testimony itakuwa uh, ushuhuda concerning what god is doing in your life kile mungu anatena maishani mwako we are preaching to you today Karatina. Tunaohubiria leo wapendwa Karatina. Because there was an example that was set by the 12 and 72. Maana kuna mfano na kielelezo kilichoachwa na wale thanashara wanafunzi na sabina wawili. They were called and they answered. Waliitwa naam na wakaitika wito. They were sent and they obeyed. Walitumwa hawakutazama nyuma lakini wakakaza mwendo. They taught others freely. Wakafundisha wengine bure without expecting compensation pasipo kutarajia kurejeshewa mapato there was a song led by our sister kuna wimbo uliongozwa na dada yetu at uh, the disciples eh, wanafunzi the ones who were very close to jesus walio kwa wa karibu mno na yesu mwokozi they were caught up in a spirit of uh, grumbling walipata na katika roho ya roho ya kulalamika wakaanza kuuliza mkozi uh, the, the lord they began to ask the lord how about us na sisi je we left families sisi tuliacha kila kitu jamii we left profitable business tukaacha biashara zenye maarufu we left opportunity tuliacha fursa za ajabu tutalipwa na nini to, what, what is our pay shame on them aibu kwao Shame on us. Aibu kwetu tunapofikiri vile vile pia. This country taifa hili is lost in the spirit of what is innate for me. Linapotea katika swala dira heoki. What is innate for me? Ya kwangu inaoniangukia ni gani? How shall I profit from this world? Mradi huu kikamilika nitafaidika na namna gani? Nyumba yangu my family. Jamia, how will it benefit from this? Itafaidika kwa namna gani katika swala hili? Shame on us. Aibu kwetu tunapofikiri vile. Shame on us. Aibu kwetu. The greatest opportunity that a man shall have nafasi kubwa ambayo mwanadamu atawahi pata is to serve in the kingdom of God. Ni kutumika katika ufalme wa Mungu. Now the word has been preached. Na hilo neno limehubiriwa. Folks, let me tell you. Niwaambieni wa kanisa na wapendwa. There was a very powerful minister of the gospel before you reach Tomotomo. Kulikuwa na mduma mkubwa wa injili kabla ufike sehemu ya Tomotomo. I was this I was this tall. Tumeshwa bwana alikuwa kiwango hicho. A mere boy. Ah kijana mdogo tu. This man, kijana huyu, mtu huyu samani. He would not ride his own bicycle. Hangeendesha baiskeli yake mwenyewe so that it doesn't reduce the time he has to spend. Isije kapunguza mwedo ambao ameutumia pale. Akisoma Biblia. Ah while reading the Bible. Alikuwa he would push the bicycle. Angesukuma baiskeli yake and he would be reading the word. Na at the same time he was reading the Bible. He won't ride on it so that it doesn't just finish the time. Ataendesha ili zipoteze muda wake. He will push it at iskuma and sometimes he would stop na wakati mwingine angesimamisha baiskeli yake Anybody in the house who know that uh, prophet ah kuna mtu anamjua nabii huyo alikuwa ah wonderful wonderful Aha. that's the man huyo ndio huyo sasa Reverend Meshek Morage Reverend Meshek Morage The first time I had the man Maria kwanza nilipomsikia huyo 
he said alisema folks eh, watu before us this word was preached kabla neno hili kuhubiriwa we came and preached the same word tulikuja tukahubiri neno hilo hilo and there's nothing wrong na hamna ubaya wote the trouble is with your hearts shida ni mioyo yenu we shall pray for your hearts tutaombea mioyo yenu so that you shall repent ili mkatubu you will turn to god mge, in salvation mgeukie mu kwa wokovu and you will walk into the kingdom of god na mtaje katika ufalme wa mungu mkiwa na mioyo safi how have you responded to the word of god Ume, that has been delivered to you umeitikia vipi na mungu ambalo umewahi ilipata ama limepokelewa kwako let me give you an example nikupe mfano uh, the time wakati was 9 pm in the evening ilikuwa saa 3 uh, jioni the date tarehe was 23rd September 1994 ilikuwa tarehe 23 uh, September mwaka 1994 the place mahali penyewe was a room a hostel room in the university of birmingham in uk kwa chumba cha nani cha kule umareka uk samahani mhm what happened ikawaje basi i simon mwangi masharia had from heaven upon reading the word of god in isaiah 6 verses 8 and 9 Mtumishi wa Bwana akaitikia Bwana baada ya kusoma kitabu cha nabii Isaya sita mstari wa nane na watisa. Kwa maana uh, uh, because I'm not very sharp or very intelligent. Maana si mtaalamu ama siko hima mno. And this was the first time I'm reading the Bible by myself. Huu ni mara yangu ya kwanza wakati wa kusoma neno la Mungu. I would not read sitting down. Singelisoma hali nimeketi. And I would not put a pillow to kneel. Wala singeka mkeka kuyapiga magoti yangu pale. I knelt on bare ground. Nilipiga magoti katika sakafu kavu. And when I read that scripture. Naliposoma fungu hilo la maandiko. I moved from the kneeling position. Nikatoka katika mahali pale nilipokuwa nimepiga magoti. I stood on my two feet. Nikasimama kwa miguu yangu. And let me tell you. Niwaambie The Bible says and I was listening Bila sababu kwa nika through this word nikawa nalisikiza neno hilo hali nikisoma there was a conversation going on in heaven kulikuwa na mazungumzo inaendelea mbinguni and they would ask na wangeuliza whom shall I said tumtume nani ni mtume nani and who will go for us nani ataenda kwa niaba yetu Up to there I believe the Trinity was in in session. Kutoka pale naamini kwamba utatu wa Mungu ulikuwa katika awamu fulani. And they were debating. Na walikuwa wanajadiliana. Eh who shall we said? Tutamtuma nani hapa? And of course I was one in uh, several billion people on earth. Ama kweli ilikuwa mmoja katika mabilioni saba katika uso wa ulimwengu. Ai mimi I said here am I said me Nikasema mimi hapa bwana nitume That those were the words of Isaiah Hayo ilikuwa maneno ya Nabii Isaiah When he peeped into heaven and saw the royal throne Alipotazama mbingu na kuona enzi iliyotukuka ya bwana When he saw the glory of God in entirety Alipona utukufu wa Mungu katika ukuu wake wote Oh his learning told him Elimu yake yote ikamwambia You are done wewe umekwisha You are finished wewe umeisha Isaya There is not a soul that is so God face to face Hamna nafsi iliyona Mungu uso kwa uso na ikaweza kuishi baadaye He was comforted akafarijiwa and These are the words that came into my heart Na, and might. Haya ndio maana yalikuja katika moyo wangu vile vile katika nia zangu. I stood completely on my feet. Nikasimama kikamilifu kwa miguu yangu. I was alone in that room. Nikawa peke yangu katika chumba kile. And I spoke loudly in my own voice. Nikanena kwa sauti kuu kwa maneno yangu mwenyewe tu hivi. 
Here I am Lord Niko hapa e bwana send me Nitume What was the result Matokeo yalikuwa yepi The following day which was 24th September 94 Siku iliyofuata ilikuwa tarehe 24 Septemba mwaka 2994 I attended a service in an evangelical church on Elim Road. Nikahudhuria kanisa katika kanisa la evangelical a kanisa hilo. Bado UK. I was not in my mind when I said I called upon the name of the Lord and the Lord saved me. Siku katika nia zangu nilisema kwamba nalita jina la Bwana naye akaniokoa. Up to now. Mpaka siku ya leo, mpaka sasa. I was never clear sikwa dhahiri kabisa whether I was in my own mind kama nilikuwa katika mawazo yangu or I was like John ama nilikuwa katika Yohana uh, mtume wa Kristo who would be in the spirit ambaye angekuwa katika roho and is told the things to right na anaambua vitu atakavyonakili let me tell you nikwambie every serious job has a title it has a rank and it has qualifications kila kazi iko na wadha iko na malipo yake iko na ngazi zake na itimisho zake the jobs that are available in the kingdom of god kazi zinazopatikana katika ufalme wa Mungu ni amene ni nyingi sana they are evangelists kuna uinjilisti they are preachers kuna wahubiri they are pastors kuna wachungaji they are ushers kuna shamazi they are singers kuna waimbaji they are teachers kuna walimu they are encouragers kuna waimizao they are worshipers the, the jobs are many kuna wabuduo jamani ni kazi nditele these job titles a fieo ama nyadha za kazi hizi have different ranks iko na ngazi tofauti tofauti are the titles na na cheo tofauti tofauti Uh, with total respect there are bishops kwa heshima kubwa sana jua tuna maaskofu katikati yetu there are apostles wapo mitume uh, there are archbishops wapo ma archbishop ama maaskofu wakuu machungaji uh -huh. there are elders kuna wazee wa kanisa there are deacons kuna shamasi uh, the titles are many na cheo na ngazi ni tofauti tofauti i'm trying to say this najaribu kusema hivi you will not be nominated for any job hautateuliwa kwa kazi yote without the basic qualification pasipo kuhitimu kwa kimsingi the very basic qualification kule, for all the jobs in the kingdom of god kule kuhitimu kwa kimsingi kwa kazi zote katika ufalme wa Mungu uh, as follows una iko namna ifuatavyo you will hear the word of god utalisikia neno la Mungu you will read and study the word of god utasoma na kuchambua neno la Bwana You will receive conviction over sin. Utapokea ushawishi ama kushawishika kwa dhambi. You will repent your sins. Utatubu dhambi zako. You will receive salvation Uta by faith in Christ Jesus. Wokovu kwa imani katika Kristo Yesu bwana wetu. You will be baptized by immersion. Utabatizwa kwa batizo wa kutofia. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jina la Baba na Mwana Roho Mtakatifu. You will desire and ask and receive the Holy Spirit to indwell you. Utatamana kushaukia ujazo wa Mtakatifu ukafurike kwako. You will receive power to witness. Utapokea nguvu za kuwa shahidi wa Kristo. Without those qualifications. Pasipo kuhitimu kwa namna ile. Na kwanza ya tatu. Uh, especially the third one. If you are not saved. Uh, kama haujaokoka. Don't apply for jobs in the kingdom. Usi aitishe kazi katika ufalme wa Mungu. I'm saying with the above qualifications na you are ready to join the ranks of the workers na sema who katika, are, whose core business is to preach and to declare the kingdom of God. Katika kuitimu huko nimeotaja basi umeitimu kufanya kazi katika ngazi yote katika ufalme wa Mungu. You will join others in the business of making disciples of the nations. Utajiunga wengine kufanya wanafunzi wa kila taifa kwa Kristo. And I'm asking whether you are ready to join in the work of us of the kingdom of God. Na uta kwamba je uko tayari kuingia katika kujiunga na watenda kazi katika kazi ya Mungu. There are no nice people in heaven. Hamna kele hamna watu nice nice. Watu wazuri mbinguni. Et yeah. watu et wazuri au tu ni wazuri au no, there are no beautiful people in heaven hamna watu warembo mbinguni there are not well dressed people in heaven hamna watu wale wanadhifu kule mbinguni there are no rich people in heaven hamna wakwasi mbinguni there are no uh, high ranking people in heaven hamna watu wenye wenye gazi za juu kuzidi wengine kule mbinguni the person who is in heaven yule aliye mbinguni 
is the person who has received forgiveness of sin ni yule mtu amepokea msamaha wa dhambi by faith kwa imani they have asked and received the salvation in Christ Jesus wameona na kupokea wokovu kupitia Kristo Yesu and they have invited the holy spirit to come within them na walialika roho mtakatifu atande mle ndani mwao to receive power to witness wapokee nguvu za kuweza kuwa shahidi wa Yesu those are the people in heaven hao ndio watu wako mbinguni are you ready to join those in heaven uko tayari kujiunga na walio kule mbinguni Are you ready to work in the kingdom of God? Uko tayari kufanya kazi. There are many jobs there. Katika bustani la Bwana, katika shamba la Bwana na watu wengi wako kule tayari. I'm asking these people of Karatina. Nauliza watu wa Karatina, who would desire to be known by Christ? Je, ni nani angetamani atambulike na ajulikane na Kristo? Who would desire that their name would be written in the lamb's book of life nani angetamani kwamba jina lake kwamba limeandikwa katika kitabu cha mwana kondoo wa Mungu mbinguni beautiful people watu wa rembo kabisa beautiful people watu wa rembo kabisa what do you desire is the greatest thing in your life kile unachotamani ndio kitu cha juu kuliko mambo yote katika maisha the word has been delivered to you neno limeachiliwa kwenu how do you respond to that word unaitikia vipi neno hilo the bible says biblia inasema Christ is standing at your door. Yesu amesimama katika lango. He is knocking on your door. Anabisha katika lango la moyo wako. Will you open for him? Je, utamfungulia au la? Will you open for him? Utamfungulia. Eh, tupatiwe mic hapa. Amen. Amen. Ah, uh, tusaidiwe na mic. Uh, the Bible says Day of salvation is not tomorrow or next year. Bila sema kwamba siku ya wakovu sio kesho ama mwaka ujao. The day of salvation is today. Siku ya wakovu ni leo. The day of salvation is now. Siku ya wakovu ni sasa. What you how you respond to this word we have delivered to you? Jinsi utakapopokea neno ambalo umepokea siku ya leo. Beloved, wapenzi That is your responsibility. Hilo ndilo jukumu lako. I want to thank the leaders of this fellowship. Ningependa kuwashukuru viongozi wa washa kama hii for the opportunity to come before you. Kwa nafasi ya kuja mbele zenu. Are giving me the opportunity na kunipa nafasi to deliver the word. Kupeana neno la Bwana siku yenu. Whether you are saved or not you belong to God. Kama hujaokoka ama hujaokoka wewe ni wa Mungu. I think it is very important that you belong to God correctly. Na ni muhimu basi uwe wa Mungu kwa jinsi ilivyo sahihi. And salvation is the way to have a positive productive relationship with God. Na wokovu ndio njia ya kuwa na uhusiano wenye dhamana na ubora na faida katika ufalme wa Mungu. Has this word touched your heart? Neno hili je limeguza moyo wako? If you know that it has spoken to you concerning salvation, kama unajua limenena na wewe kuhusu maswala ya wokovu, raise up your hand. Inua mkono wako juu. If it has spoken to you concerning being saved in Christ Jesus, kama imenena na wewe kuhusu kuokolewa na Yesu Kristo, raise up your hand. Inua mkono wako vizuri. Thank you my brother there. Asante na mikono imenuliwa kule. Thank you my sister. Asante dada yangu. If it has touched your heart and you want to receive salvation now. Kama imeguza moyo wako na ungependa kupenda maisha yako na kupokea wokovu huo sasa. Those who are raising your hands please stand up. Wale wenye mikono yenu tafadhali simameni. Kwa heshima kila moja. We shall not ask you to come here. Hata hatutakuuliza uje hapa mbele. But this place is full of ministers of the gospel. Lakini eneo hili lote limejaa wa huduma wa injili ya Kristo. the spirit of God raised me to ask you to come near this leadership of the church. Roho wa Mungu ananielekeza mpendo anikuambie kwamba ukaribie viongozi wa kanisa walio hapa mbele tafadhali. Na kama kuna mwingine tafadhali usiogope. You should not hesitate to come into the kingdom of God 
wala usisite site kuja katika ufalme. The Lord has spoken to you concerning your personal relationship with God. Kama la Mungu limeendana nawe kuhusu uhusiano wako wa mtu binafsi na Mungu. Why your way in front here? Pata jia yako tafadhali tu kwa stare tu mwenyewe ukuje tu hapa mbele. Uh, ministers of the gospel, one of uh, you please minister to the man. Wahudumu wanjili tafadhali the prayer of uh, repentance. Muhudumieni mpendo wa huyo kuhusu ombi la uh, ombi la toba. The Bible says when a soul is saved here on earth Bila sababu kama nafsi moja tu inapookoka hapa duniani There is celebration in heaven Kuna sherehe kubwa mno kule mbinguni Are we want to join the heaven uh, assembly Ningependa kujiunga na, na jeshi na kundi la mbinguni In receiving the salvation of this one man Katika kupokea wokovu wa mpendo huyu mmoja na muona hapa mbele I once read a story concerning Uh, ben Hin and his ministry. Nilisoma simulizi wakati mmoja kuhusu mtumishi wa Mungu Ben Hin na huduma yake. He traveled over 3000 miles. Alisafiri yapata maili 33000. Uh, Amd with his heavenly choir. Ameami na akiwa na choir yake ya wimba. He had a battery of ministers. Alikuwa na wengi wa huduma. He has assistance of every kind. Ako na usaidizi wa kila namna. He equipments bigger than this one. Alikuwa na vyombo vya nguvu hata kuzidi tulivyojua. He spent over 15 million dollars. Alitumia zaidi ya milioni 15 dola za Marekani. Lord behold uh, uh, natazama one soul came to the Lord in that mission nafsi moja peke yake nilipeana maisha yake kwa Yesu Kristo katika wito ule we are celebrating God this time twasherekea Mungu wakati huu leo at just being present eti kuepo tu hivi a soul is saved kwamba nafsi hii imeokoka siku ya leo don't miss the opportunity to put your hands together Usikos... and welcome this soul to heaven Ah uh, usikose kuweka nafsi kumshukuru bwana kwa nafsi moja. Hallelujah. 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 Karati. Thank God for this one. Tumshukuru bwana kwa nafsi hii. Thank you Lord for his salvation. Asante bwana kwa wokovu wako. Thank you for his soul. Asante kwa nafsi. Thank you for his family. Asante kwa jamii yake. Thank you King of Glory Sante for your goodness and mercy. Wote tukufu kwa wema na fadhili zako. I want to thank you for this opportunity ningependa kumshukuru bwana kwa fursa hiyo and i want to stop them ningependa ni achie pale let's appreciate the man of god pastor simon wangi that's wonderful hallelujah with a better crop with a better crop yes thank you sir thank you thank hallelujah. you let's also appreciate our interpreter brother pastor george hey amen i miss visiting your church and just sitting and listening to your interpretation <laughs> that was a wonderful wonderful interpretation let's give him another clap wow that was surely an authentic word of god and blessed is the church whom pastor simon pastors having imparting it with that understanding of God's word amen, amen. at this juncture before we break for a healthy break uh, i would want to welcome our mom once again Mrs. Joyce. So that yes, let's appreciate her. So that she may bring to us the gospel artists that are with us. Together, na sisi tutasimama tuwe na wakati wa kumsifu Mungu eh along with our guest artists that are with us eh and uh, from there we shall break for a health break ready to begin for a third session and make sure you are not missing any of these sessions every session has uh, some anointing that will impact your life
kwena maguta ma lohomu theru oge shuje kale agiro the togo the enable so don't they are missing even a single session kwa gwelo sho muri ganeti nduka na ge guka amen amen welcome welcome Thank you. Let's appreciate our reverend right here. He has led us so well and we are thanked to God. And we are grateful for the word of God. It is a solid word that we have had this afternoon. So um, at this time, I want to welcome one of the gospel um, ministers who is here with us. And this is none other than Boss M.O.G. Where are the youths in the house? Can you appreciate this great minister of God to come and minister to us? He has been together with us. He has been running the road shows. Together with Jimmy. And they have done a great job. It is a blessing to see young men who love the Lord. And to see young men who use their talents to serve God. Please put your hands together as I hand over this microphone to our brother to minister. Karibu sana. Microphone yeno kwe mwini. Amen. No, no, no. Yee, waseye. Waseya. Waseye. Waseya. Ah, tuamuke ni kidogo. Tuamuke ni kidogo. Tumeketi sana. Tumeketi sana. DJ, 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 tabu Adipatie uh, ka, ka instrumento hapo tu warm up kidogo Tutoe njeve kidogo Ama vipi Tutoe baridi kidogo Alafu tuone itakuwa aji hapa uh, Thank you so much Pastor Mike For kukuni trust nai Mike And uh, <laughs> yeah, So um I hope mkona saik. Mkona saik. Ah, tunangoja DJ ana rewind uh, ana rewind CD. Tunangoja atipatie nini moja, pambio moja safi. Wangapi wanafurahia kwa hapa? Nakwambia hiyo 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 ad ilikuwa ime, imeletwa. Normally unajua sisi wa sisi vijana tukiona wazee wa kipreach tu ama tukiona mzee mzee amesimama hapa tunasema nga mzae mzae akisimama hapa tuna tuna tunasema nga eh hey, 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 itaisha saa ngapi lakini <laughs> lakini vile vile ameanza ku preach manze mko tu hapa my knowledge my wisdom my nini wangapi wame understand hiyo word manze mimi <laughs> nimebarikiwa nao sana um uh, Apart from ukulima najua some of us tumepata hiyo part ya ukulima but uh, ametupatia actually how who is the word of god sikuwa sikuwa ito wa jesus then ni ka replace jesus na word but all the time tunasikianga in the beginning there was the word the word was with god and then the word was god unakuwa confused shindo okay and then sasa na Jesus anakuja tena na kuambia I am the way the truth and the life una connect to my dot yani biblia uweze soma kavas kamoja na useme eh hey, now i know the bible lazima u connect old new sasa zingine unaambia ufungue wa ibrania unatafuta kwa old testament najua some of us hata hatujui kitabu cha warumi iko kwa old ama new but i hope that god atatupatia desire ya wadi yake au sio i don't know dj are you ready but I don't know story. Sikwangi mse wa story mingi. Mimi hata nikiitwa kwa stage naambia nga tu DJ ama mwenye na introduce, wosi ni introduce, weka tu ngoma nikuje nipige nduru niwaambie vile mtaruka. But leo ameniweza. 
Leo ndio ile siku kama juu neno ya Mungu na umesimama hapa mbele. Watu wanakuangalia so wewe unaimbanga tu peke yake. Hakuna kitu kingine unafanyanga. Hata unaimbanga gospel hata uweze tupeka ka memory verse. Eh? So um mneza keti kabla <laughs> DJ atu. Ama mkosawa kusimama? Mkosawa kusimama? Ah very nice very nice. Uh, me one of the things in Milan kama kijana and one this is one of the things in Milan juzi juzi. Juzi juzi tu ni possible kuokoka so many years no ujui the word of God. Ni realize it is so possible that unaweza kuwa umesoma word ya God but au understand unajuanga kwa Bible kuna mali imeandikwa but aujui maana hiyo kitu. For example kuna hiyo hadi nasemanga I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mimi nimekuwa nikijua mimi mtu aniambii kitu. I can do all things. Alafu best yangu ananiuliza wewe unasema anga hiyo word unajua anga hapo juu kumeandikwa nini? Sijui. Akaniuliza nafta hapo hapo chini kuna kwanga kumeandikwa nini sijui what do you know i can do all things through christ that gives me hey nikamwambia tebu ngoja ni google acha ni google ju atutembeangi na biblia siku hizi si ni ukweli jenzi tuko na bible lakini ziko na kutu vumbi Kiulizo ulifungua lini? Chat kuna. Usini nyonge hivyo. Wantu. Chat chat chenyu kama at least mumeomoka kuna kuna screen. So ubebangi Biblia unasema kwa chat tuko na screen tutaisomea wapi? Kwa screen. But tukirudi nyumbani Biblia iko na vumbi and everything. So nikataka ku find up hapo juu kuna kwanga kumeandikwaje. Nika realize Paul alikuwa anasema kama ni pesa nimeshawaikuwa nayo kama ni kusota nimeshawaiso sota so alikuwa tu anasema in all the environment whether niko nayo ama sina i can do all things through who christ and then nikaishikanisha na preaching unaja sasa lugha yetu sasa zingine akanga disrespectful wakati tunasema mzai Alafu mzaya aka preach. <laughs> mzaya akasema hauhitaji resources. Kwa wakati Yesu alikuwa anatuma wanafunzi wake, aliwaambia msibebe kitu hiyo hiyo. Eh, tulikuwa hapa. Hebu DJ nipe hiyo kitu kabla wanisahau. Mikono tu hapa. Mikono tu hapa. Mikono tu hapa. One. Two. lazima tupime kama uko na right ama left haya ndio waza yetu tumeshaanza kuwatoa haya DJ give me the same track the same track the same track let's go let's say jana mbele mikono yote anzi ndio anzi ndio right left right left right left hello na nabo iko Ah, 
Hata nione kama mnajua hii. Tuendelee ama tusiendelee. DJ let's go. Mwambie simoni weka mpaka kilindini kashushe nyavu zenu Yesu alipokuisha kunena hey! alimwambia simoni weka mpaka kilindini kashushe nyavu zenu bwana mkubwa tumefanya kazi ya kuchosha usikukuta bwana mkubwa tumefanya kazi hata Twende hii. Gimme 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 gimme. Today is my wedding day. Ladies and Oh, 
Nimefanya na Pitson Inasema hivi Mungu ni upendo Mungu ni upendo Mungu ni upendo anatupenda DJ
you got your heart when you get hurt You better be a lot and so smart The movie's coming in a short cut All you want to do is to see you falling down flat It's a really hard thing to get to you Now for a song I better leave for longer Smoking my top gun, just be a life in danger My feet are done, yeah Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna rise up on them Gonna send this chorus, go on and sing I'm not 